Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the five skills and tricks that I use to get some of my apps into the App Store top charts. Now, these aren't in any particular order, but there are some that are more important than others. These are also not uh, you know, completely factual. They're more so anecdotal and experiential based on you know what I've learned building dozens of apps, some of them great, some of them terrible. So that said, drop a like down below and let's jump right in. So number one, make your apps get to the point. So very often it's common for developers to shove a bunch of features and functionality in our apps. And then when a new user launches our app, we show this painfully long onboarding sequence. You know, you swipe through it, it shows a screenshots, a bunch of text, and oftentimes it's kind of, you know, useless, right? The user might be coming to use one part of the app, they already know what it does, and maybe bombarding them with, you know, screenshots of the feature that's buried under some menu isn't the most helpful thing up front. So getting to the point is really about make it concise, make it easy for the user to download, use your app, and get the value proposition from it the reason that they actually downloaded the app. That said, you can of course have different ways to onboard the user in you know concise ways. This doesn't mean necessarily get rid of onboarding entirely, but something to keep at top of mind. Number two, keep your apps updated. Please, please, please keep your apps updated. So very often, you know, we build an app, we put it on the store, and then we sit and wait. And then we continue to wait. And guess what? Then we continue to wait. And applications need a lot of update and care, right? Not necessarily meaning you need to update the underlying technology, things like Swift UI, UI Kit, Combine. Frankly, the user doesn't know what you're actually using. Updating your app and keeping it updated means leveraging Apple's latest and greatest in terms of user-facing functionality. Things like pointer support and hover support on iPad, things like continuity with iCloud, things that actually exponentially improve your application's experience for the end user. Without keeping it updated, guess what? Someone's gonna copy your app, they're gonna add all the bells and whistles, and they're gonna get all those users to use their app instead of the one that you spent weeks and months and possibly even years building. This brings me to number three, localization. This one's pretty cut and dry. People speak different languages around the world. Naturally, the more languages you offer your app in, the more user reach you're gonna have. Now, this isn't uh, admittedly the easiest. We can't really go to Google Translate and copy and paste because there's dialects and you know different meanings and conjugations. And you know the only thing worse than a non-localized app is an incorrectly localized app. But I digress. Localizing your app really gets you further reach in terms of usage. And guess what? It's going to catapult you up those top charts with more people using it, more people reviewing it, and more people enjoying the work that you have put in and built for your app. This brings us to number four. Number four is accessibility. So this is usually the item where everyone kind of, you know, rolls their eyes. Is accessibility really worth it? Aside from the fact that, you know, we want to build accessible apps for everyone to enjoy and use regardless of, you know, any, any challenge they may face. But accessibility is more so than voiceover and just screen readers. Accessibility also plays a factor in terms of, you know, contrast ratio, making sure text is legible, making sure text is spaced out enough for anyone, right? And that really goes to design thinking. Making sure your design is not only accessible for those who might be using some accessibility function of iOS, but accessible for the general population. Now, I've seen a lot of apps that honestly are great, but their design is super, super, you know, antiquated. It's just hard to read for text and dynamic font size. And, you know, accessibility should be top of mind when you're building out anything. Uh, oftentimes, unfortunately, it's still backburnered by a lot of people. I think that's by virtue of excitement of getting something out into the App Store. You know, it certainly doesn't need to be perfect when you get it out there, but you should absolutely keep uh, accessibility top of mind. And this brings us on to number five and the final element, which really helps catapult your app up the top charts on the App Store, and that is make your app adaptable. Now, what the heck does that mean? That really means leverage the different device families and operating system features that Apple provides across its entire ecosystem. 
So oftentimes we'll build out an app targeting iPhone and it's really enticing and you know really easy to check that box in Xcode and say, hey, this now supports iPad too. And with very minimal code changes, things like you know popovers and whatnot, our app will function on iPad, right? The term function there, I'm gonna say big air quotes, right? Because just because it functions, it compiles and runs, doesn't mean it's a good experience. So, you know, Xcode will scale up your app, assuming, you know, all your layouts and constraints and framing are fine, but it's a pretty poor experience, right? Like we have so much screen real estate on the iPad. Make sure you're using things like split view controllers. Make sure you're optimizing for the screen real estate, for the different camera hardware available to you if that's relevant to your app. Make sure you're thinking about, you know, if, if this is something on a larger device, can we add pointer support? Would the person potentially be using this with a keyboard and a mouse and a trackpad and et cetera, et cetera. And this also extends over to the Apple Watch. Now on Apple Watch, there's different sizes. And while they might not be as drastic as the size difference between an iPhone and an iPad, they are relevant. And they're relevant because you can really tailor your experience exponentially you know better and more valuable for the user based on what device they're running and this also applies to different os versions you might have you know some great features that you add for ios 14 or upcoming 15 but what about a lot of users that are still on 13 what about people that have devices that they can't update even you know even though a lot of apple users do update to the latest and greatest what about the people that just don't have a new device so keep your apps updated, keep them adaptable, keep them modern. And honestly, that's what this all comes down to, right? Keep your app modern for your users and your users will return the love with downloads, positive reviews, and ultimately all that aggregates like a big wave and pushes your app up the top charts. Now, obviously there's things to consider like, uh, you know, barrier to entry. Is it a free app? Is it a paid app? Which category do you compete in? Is it social networking? Is it business? Different categories drive different, you know, volumes of download and different competition uh, that's related to that. So, you know, keep that top in mind. If you haven't dropped a like down below, make sure to do so. If not for the video, definitely for this ridiculous lighting setup that I've got over there and over there. You guys might not see it, but I've spent a lot of time with, you know, lighting and just this room. This is an entirely different room that, you know, I've set up to do more of these videos where I get to actually talk to you guys. And subscribe to the channel if you're into iOS, Swift, tech-related videos. Leave a comment down below if you've ever had an app that got to the top charts, what it was. Drop a link. I'll definitely check it out if you drop a link. And... That's it. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.